Zion Mellon Church family, welcome to our virtual service for the third Sunday in February, Black History Month, the month of love. I hope every man spoiled their lady on last Sunday and also vice versa. Um, today, we are just delighted to have each and every one with you. Go ahead and hit that share button, that like button, and share it with all of your family and friends. We have a wonderful service that is filled packed for you today. Today, we are actually going to hear, in honor of Black History Month, a historical sketch on Bishop G.E. Patterson. Apparently, the old saints know about him, but April's gonna learn a little something today about Bishop G.E. Patterson. And then, Pastor Capers will come forward with the third installment of his recovery sermon series. So we are really delighted to hear that. The recovery sermon series has been blessing each and every one of us this month of February. And our male chorus will be will take us into the presence of the Lord on today. Thank you. Oh, come along, come along. Good he is 
and what he means to us. We want you to join in with us. We want you to grab your Bibles. We want you to give a cup of coffee if you're comfortable. Receive the word of God, but let's join in in worship. You've been called to worship. Bishop Gilbert Earl Patterson, also known as G.E. Patterson, was born in 1939 to Bishop W.A. and Mrs. Mary Patterson Sr. in Tennessee. He was reared in Mississippi, Tennessee, in Detroit, Michigan. Bishop J.S. Bailey ordained him in 1958 as an elder in the Church of God in Christ. In 1962, Bishop Patterson became a co-pastor with his father at Holy Temple Church of God and Christ in Memphis, Tennessee. Bishop Patterson continued his pastor in 1975 as the founder and pastor of Temple of Deliverance, the Cathedral of the Bountiful Blessings in Memphis, Tennessee. Today, Temple of Deliverance, Church of God in Christ, is one of the nation's fastest growing congregations with over 12,000 on its membership roll. The church is located at 369 G.E. Patterson Avenue. Temple of Del Deliverance also serves as the home church base for the rapid growing Bountiful Blessings Ministry, which is viewed internationally on BT and TVN cable networks weekly, as well as on local TV stations throughout the nation. BBM has a mailing list of over 100,000 active donors from outside the Memphis viewing audience. Bishop Patterson is founder and president of BBM. Bishop was a leader, learn minister. He has studied at the Detroit Bible Institute and Lemoy Owen College in Memphis, Tennessee. He holds an honorary doctorate from Oral Roberts University and is the president of the Charles H. Mason Bible College of Tennessee. Bishop Patterson is the publisher of Bountiful Blessings Magazine and a contributing writer in the Spirit Field Life Bible, who was, which was published by Thomas Nelson. In July 2002, Whitaker House published his first book called Here Comes the Judge. Bishop Patterson is a 20th century, century apostle of Jesus Christ. He's a re renowned national speaker known for his simplistic messages that all transcend all barriers of race, gender, age, and walks of life for people around the globe. One of his themes, be healed, be delivered, and be set free, has become a popular expression. The nation demand for audio and videotapes is overwhelming. Bishop Patterson is the president and general man manager of the Memphis-based radio station, WBBP 1480 AM, a full-time gospel station with over 100,000 daily li listeners. Bishop Patterson humbly served God and his community through the ministries he established in Temple of Deliverance Church. These ministries have a positive and direct impact on unemployment, which employs over 100 people and has over 100 local and national vendors. Wellness, TOD is a member of the Church Health Center. Education, who issues and source of a thousand scholarships annually to students entering or returning to college or universities. Also has a family life and prayer ministry with more than 40 telephone lines and a prison ministry that serves in the Criminal Justice Center and the Penal Farm in Memphis, Tennessee. There are numerous other ministries at TOD that address the needs of the community. Bishop Patterson was a leader of church leaders he served as the presiding bishop of Church of God in Christ Incorporated. Bishop Patterson has helped finance many local churches and helped organize seven other churches across the nation. Bishop Patterson was married to his lovely wife, Louise D. Patterson, for 35 years before his passing in March of 2007. Grab one somebody by the hand and tell them right now is the time for your healing. You don't have to wait till you get your life together. Listen to what he says. In his sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. 
and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed sin, the sin shall be forgiven. The devil is always trying to tell you, you can't be healed because you're not good enough. I want to tell you right now, even if you're not good enough, the Lord says, I'm here to heal you now. and tell them that. Maybe you think you're not good enough. But the Lord is ready to heal you now. And I say in the name of Jesus, be healed, be delivered, and be set free. Good morning, church family. It is so good to be with you again. We have a couple of announcements. Well, first of all, I hope that you're still celebrating and enjoying Black History Month. Black history is so important for all of us. A couple of announcements. This first, from our scholarship ministry. We'd like to uh, congratulate uh, our scholarship recipients for this spring semester. This congratulation comes from Pastor Capers and our scholarship ministry. The following students are recipients. Tyra Brown, Jalen Conyers, Jewel Edwards, Danielle Morgan, Ashlyn Wallace are receiving scholarship awards from Zion Benevolent Baptist Church. The scholarship awards day is next Sunday, February 28th, from 11 a.m. until 12 noon. Our second announcement is to our Zion Bible Church family. Please mark your calendars for March 14th, 2021. We will celebrate our pastor's 11th pastoral anniversary here at Zion Bible. More details will be following. Lord, come back.
bear the cross alone in all the world. Go free. He answered his own question where he said, no, there's a cross for everyone. And there's a cross for me. He said, how happy are the saints above who once would sorrow and care. He said, now they taste a mingled love and joy without a tear. Father, we come. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your power. And we thank you for the purpose that we're gathered here this morning in this sanctuary. And that purpose is singular. We come just to worship your name in the beauty of holiness because you've been good to us, Lord. Father, some have said you've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And we would be remiss if we didn't take just a moment to tell you thank you. Father, we ask that as this your sent servant stands in the place, God, that you have consecrated and sanctified as the spot that your people hear from you, we ask that you lay aside every weight and sin which might easily beset me and help me run with patience this race that is set before me. Father, I pray that the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I ask these things in the name of the risen Savior, who is Jesus Christ, our Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen and Amen. We give honor to the Lord on this morning for reasons of his own has favored me to serve my generation by his will. To his son Jesus, who we are indebted for delivering from a life of sin and shame. And to the comforter, our keeper, our sustainer, and our guide. To my sisters in the ministerial bond to our Ministry of Deacons, our Ministry of Trustees, uh, our AV team, uh, comprising of this morning of uh, Trustee Harry Jones, Sister April Griffin, and Sister Shay, Miss Jackson, if you're nasty, to our music ministry that is here on this morning, singing us right into the presence of the Lord in the direction of Brother Garner. We got these mighty men of God singing us this morning, the male choir, and to my brothers from other mothers, Josh and Jay, the best band in the land. God bless each and every one of you. We're excited to be celebrating this third Sunday morning. We had a light moment off camera. I was speaking with the AV team, these young sisters that have been recording for us. They didn't know who Bishop G.E. Patterson was, and I had to take them down to Memphis, Tennessee to, uh, to his church there, pulled up some YouTube clips to show what good preaching looked like. Bishop went to be with the Lord, I think, in 2007. But we want to introduce him as a part of our Black History Celebration because one of the hallmarks of black culture is black church. You ain't, I'll tell anybody, you ain't been to church until you've been to black church. And I'm thankful for remembering the life and the legacy of Bishop G. Patterson as we celebrated our Black History Moment. Kudos for Sister uh, Jackson stepping in to fill that obligation. We thank God for you. But there is a word from the Lord. I'm excited to be uh, in our third iteration of this recovery series. I'm thankful for those of you that reached out and said that this series was blessing me. I don't know how effective it is until you tell me. So I appreciate the feedback back that I've been giving. I, I thank God that, that I got a conversation with a sister, I didn't even see it coming because you never know how a message might impact somebody. But they came uh, last week and told me that the message was what they needed. So I'm glad to be of uh, uh, a responsible man and hearing what the Lord has said with this. But I want you to grab your Bibles with us. Go with me to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 6. We're only going to read one verse. And it is something that almost seems odd in the context in which Paul writes it, but it is a powerful statement because it speaks of personal responsibility. And in our recovery process, oftentimes we always look to external sources about how they influence us, but we don't always look at our role in our relationship and our response and how we got to where we are. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 12 reads on this wise from the rustic language of the King James Version. It says, all things are lawful unto me, but not all things, excuse me, but all things are not expedient. What Paul was saying, he says, I can do anything that I want, but I shouldn't do everything that I could. He said, all things are lawful for me, 
But I will not be brought under the power of any. He literally is saying that even though I can do what I want, I won't let anything have control over me. This is the recovery series. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want, if y'all help me out tonight. Everybody say recovery. Recovery. We're in recovery. Part number three. Y'all might not be able to see it because some of y'all hadn't actually seen me in a while. I'm looking forward to the day that the Lord brings us back together in the way that we were pre-pandemic. We're coming up on a year uh, since we've been apart from active, engaged, in-house worship. Uh, for those of you that hadn't seen me in a while, you might not know it, especially because I got on this, uh, this smock this morning. I like it because it's got pockets. But y'all, I'm gaining weight. <laughs> and it is of my opinion that there is nothing more awkwardly proportioned than a thin man with belly fat. <laughs> and y'all stay with me. I have gained eight pounds over the pandemic. It might not seem like y'all a lot to y'all, but my weight has stayed constant from the time that I was in high school. And in the last several months, I've been sitting around and I've been eating. People have been paying attention to it. Y'all know Brother Freddie and Deacon Thompson. They don't, they don't pull any punches. They don't miss anything. A couple Sundays ago, uh, the two men that, I, that I'm probably some of the closest with around the church, the brothers called me fat. And, you know, the, the oldest things, they ain't got no filters. Uh, but my favorite foods are now coming full circle because I sit around in the evenings and I love field peas. For those of you that, that have gardens, if you sit in peas to the house, I want you to know that they don't go to waste, they get eaten. And my favorite meal is field peas, rice, and fried chicken. And y'all don't know that I can eat that every day until I die because I never get tired of it. My folks don't know it, but oftentimes I go home just to go in my family's reserves to pull out jars of peas. I, I don't want them frozen from the grocery store. I want them fresh out of the peel. I want them jarred. And what we don't do is that we don't throw away anything that might be left over for a meal. But to get on top of that, not only after I eat the peas, rice, and chicken, I love ice cream. My bougie wife, uh, she eats the high-end ice cream. She likes the haagen -Dazs. She likes the fries. I like that cheap stuff. You can eat the Piggly Wiggly brand. Uh, the one that ain't got no name, it just got a flavor on it that don't taste like nothing that it's assigned to. And I'll run through them. The little banana pops that's made by Bluebell. I can eat about four or five of them at the time. And what you don't realize is that the more you eat and the less active you are, weight tends to retain. And I found myself having to, having to adjust. My suits don't fit the same way that they used to. Think about the last time you've been watching the broadcast you actually seen me in a suit. They all tight in the pants. I gotta, I gotta get them let out or I gotta buy some more. Y'all pray for your past that things are, are changing. It's not a bad thing. I'm not heavy, but I'm gaining weight. And I realized it's something that stayed with me. Uh, in my eating, I also watch a lot more television. I like the TLC program. Y'all ever saw the 600 pound life? That show is off the chain. And I thought about it. If I can do eight pounds in a year, in four years, I'll pick up 30 pounds by the math. And if I'm not careful, I might wind up being on that show. <laughs> Since I got the design of the devil, and everybody was talking about how much they want their pastor to gain weight. And sometimes people can prophesy a reality in your life if you ain't careful about it. But what it made me do is that realize that something light, like my eating habits, could easily turn into an addiction. And I was watching a, 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 a response, a YouTube clip of Richard Pryor. And y'all don't Google, don't, don't YouTube Richard Pryor if you ain't prepared for what comes out of his mouth. But one night in June of 1980, he made a joke saying that he didn't like cocaine, but he just liked the way it smelled. And on the night of June in, in 1980, he got high and drunk on 151 proof rum grabbed a lighter and set himself on fire. Some of y'all might remember that. Yeah. Set himself on fire because he was high. He had a number of health problems before he passed away in 2005. 
And it began to make me think about something. The Lord began to share with me. He said, son, simply because you can do something doesn't mean that you should do it. Stay with me because it's permissible. And if you were to read this passage in its context, and preachers don't often read the scriptures in context, but Paul writes to the Corinthian church about sex and other dangerous sins. I know we don't talk about sex in Baptist churches, but we're going to stay here for just a few minutes this morning. He spends the previous verses talking about how the Lord set free those that were bound by drunkenness, greed, and homosexuality. He, he said that they were washed and sanctified and justified by the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the culture of Corinth was a perfect haven for wild people to completely uh, get beside themselves. My wife and I went to Miami a couple weeks ago and we saw how different the culture is and how it dictates a region. Uh, we were walking through the airport and I promise y'all, y'all ain't had to wonder as to what was going on underneath some of the outfits. If your eyes were fine, you would be able to see what everybody did or didn't have on. We saw the super thoughts in the airport. We saw the dudes that looked like girls and the girls that looked like dudes all over Miami. And there was something to be said. The scene that reminded me of one thing that nobody can deny. In this country, you can literally be whoever or whatever you want to be, especially in this day and age. Now, catfishing is a real thing and people become whoever they want to online. And I guess it's hard for young people these days. But you season saints. We have to be realized that we can't give these young people too much grief because some of the older saints ain't got no right to shout too loud in their living rooms either. The truth of the matter is everybody know the reformed jitterbugs. Do you know that older dude with the clean link and is still trying to push up on the young girls in church? The older sister don't realize that she old because she got a young wig and it don't make her a young woman. There's some theology here. Paul said, stay with me, just because you can do something doesn't mean that you should should do it. He said, I have permission to do all things, but not all of them will be helpful to me. It's to that end in Galatians chapter 6 and verse number 5, excuse me, in verse number 13, he said, for brethren, you have been called to liberty. Only use not that liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. And what many people struggle with to the point of bondage is, is having the godly fortitude to just say no. Sometimes saying no to the things that you don't know uh, will cause you harm is something that will set you in a place that you don't necessarily want to be. Josh, you know it. That text that come through at 1.30 in the morning, you know it ain't about one thing. You know that one drink that you like the most, it ain't nothing but a trap. You know, there's some places that bring back episodic memories and take you someplace that you ain't trying to go. While you're free to go there, you're permissed to go there, Brother job doesn't mean that you should. And while we ain't bound by the law, we're free through Jesus. We need not let that freedom take us into sin. The question to the people that are watching on this morning, what is it that you love so much that is causing you to be bound? Pete, this, it might not be a what, it might be a who. The question is, is who is keeping you bound? Because while things are permissible, job they ain't always productive. Stay with me. I'm cerebral in these seasons of growth that the Lord has allowed me to see. I learned a principle that will save lives. Peep this. It's called say it out loud. If you said out loud everything that you intended to do, nine and a half times out of ten, it wouldn't get done. People don't think like that. Say it out loud. I'm going to drink this liquor. I'm going to stay up half the night, throwing it up, and feel like trash the next day because it'll make me feel good for about a half hour. Say it out loud. And keep this. Depending on where I go, I might spend $15 for it. It's quiet in here. I'm asleep with that chick that I saw scratching when she walked in, but she fine and she wearing the fire out of that dress. Say it out loud. I hope it's quiet in your living room too. I'm tired of being locked in the house. So I'm about 50 people over to my house during COVID and everything gonna be cool. Say it out loud. There's no wisdom there. Peep how some church folks think though. I'm going to buy these lottery tickets, but I'm going to tell God, tell people that God opened a door for me. We buy noni juice, acai berries, and every pill on the prescription drug plan, but won't ever pray. And that ain't productive. 
We come to church on Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter. Expect the preacher to preach you into heaven because you live like hell on Memorial Day, Labor Day, and the 4th of July. That ain't productive. Look at what the word says in John 15, chapter and second verse. He says, every branch that is in me and doesn't bear any fruit, he says, I'm taking it away. Verse 6 says, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. The question is, how productive are you being? I'm well, preaching about five minutes here. I got to ask again, what has made you unproductive? You marry the judge Mathis at 10 o'clock so deeply that if the Lord asked you to pray at 10 a.m. as opposed to staying in glued in front of the television, would you able, be able to do it? I know that with those days that I'm off work, I like Price is Right. Price is Right still come on at 11 o'clock on CBS, right? Do you love the Price is Right so much that you can't make a prayer meeting in your living room? What's robbing you of your productivity, saints? Are you praying as much as you're, you're in your habits? That's a nice recipe for bondage. What we call routine is what the enemy calls regulation. And we been, haven't been together in a while. And some people have already told me that we can open tomorrow and they still ain't coming. That's cool and all, but how are you keeping yourself when you're in a spiritual desert in the interim? Amen. Let me help you out this a little bit. While you might be able to do what's permissible, and while your, your things that you're able to do are permissible, the question that you have to ask yourself is it productive? But then you got to also ask the question, what kind of power has influence over my life? And that's a legit question. I got a kick out of watching the impeachment hearings a couple days ago, but not for the reason you think. I spent a lot of time up on Capitol Hill in Washington. And there, it's funny, because everybody that you meet thinks that they're in charge. <laughs> the same is true in the church. You mess around and give somebody, an average person in church, a position, and they'll show you who their true colors is. But if you mess around and ask them to do anything, <laughs> I'm laughing on the inside. That's an inside joke. It's because people think that they have power just because they are. No, not so. You don't have power because of who you are. You are powerful because of what you do. And the question is, is what kind of powers have influences on you? People think that mortal men can fix spiritual problems. That's not the case. Some of us are in the same boat. We're in a spiritual prison. And we think a stimulus check is going to fix our problems. We're brokenhearted. We run to any and everybody to find love as opposed to trying to find the power within us to love ourselves first and then find somebody else. A spiritual problem needs a spiritual recovery. Repeat this. Ephesians chapter 6 verse number 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high place. Your catalyst to recovery is for you to put up what Paul says is a faith fight. Everybody say a faith fight. Say it again, a faith fight. You're fighting, but to win the fight, but to win it, you really need power. And if you want power to recover, you need power. Some battles are those that you can't fight alone. You need the parakletos, is what the Greek calls it, means the helper. The helper is the one that said, if you need me, call on me in your time of trouble. Peep this, and I'll help you recover. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It's that same power that said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Isaiah said, he given power to the faith, and then that have no might, he increases their strength. Jesus said, behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over the power of all the enemy, and nothing by any means shall be able to help you. He said, but as many received him, to them he gave the power to be called the sons of God, even to them that believe on the name. The question is, do you believe and can you recover? Are you able to recover? It only comes by power. And it's there that we have to realize that this power is not within our own hands, but it's in the hands of the Almighty God. And all I want to give you tonight, this morning, excuse me, is a recipe for recovery. It's there that you realize that because things are permissible, they're not always productive, but you'll also find sources of power in them. I want to encourage you to find out what it is that you're being influenced by. 
Is it this Lent season that I had an honest, an honest assessment with myself? Wednesday was Ash Wednesday. I wasn't able to make it to a service to get prayed for. But I did it right there in my office, and I asked the Lord to take away a number of things from me, not just for the next 40 days, 46 days by the man. But I asked him to take them away and never allow them to return again. And that included some people in my life that were bringing me no productivity, no fruit. Every tree branch, every vine that doesn't bring more fruit, you have to cut it off and let it be burned, according to John 15. If someone ain't abiding in the presence of the Lord, I don't have much time for that now. I don't know when my time might come. I'm trying to see Jesus, saints. It's there I want you to take an honest assessment over your life and ask you, what's slowing up my recovery process? What's causing me to stay in the place that I'm in? And if it is a spiritual matter, I can only offer you the one thing that will benefit you the most, and it's Jesus. Right where you are in your living room, if you know that you aren't saved, if you're in your bedroom, if you're watching on your phone, on your iPad, on your desktop, and you know that you need Jesus, I want you to connect with us. We're here with one purpose and one purpose alone. And that's to help as many people that want to know the Lord to find them. We're living in some strange time, y'all. We're going to find the presence of the Lord. Every head is bowed and every eye is closed. Father, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity to be in your presence. And Master, I ask that for your people, that whatever they stand in need of, your, your hand would richly provide. Father, for those that need salvation, for those that need deliverance, for those that need to be set free, for those that are calling on your name, I pray that you open every door, provide every opportunity for your people. Bless them right where they stand in need of, for those that might be sick, for those that might be broken hearted, Father, throw your arms around the Jackson family. Keep them in the palm of your hand. It is our prayer. Lord, help us to love with one another. Help us to walk together. Father, I pray for Sister Eartha Jones, God, that you would heal her body, God. Pray for her husband, Deacon Jones, God, for everything that he stands in need of. I lift up Nakia. I lift up Marlon. Father, I lift up Mother Jones, God, at this hour. Father, I pray for their entire family. Keep them in the palm of your hand, Lord. Father, I lift up Deacon Herbert Bell, God. Father, I pray that you would keep them in your peace. This is our prayer. Our members both far and wide, God. For one that might be watching, God, I pray that you would impart a special blessing for whatever mountain they need help climbing. Father, give them strength and see them through to the end. This is our prayer. Father, in every step of the way, we'll be so careful to give your name all the honor, your name all the glory, and your name all the praise. For it's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. We thank God for you and your your generous giving by way of your time and your offering. We've also been getting gifts from people that are not affiliated with this ministry. We're, we're grateful for it. It's because of your generosity that we're able to continue to do this at least for a little while longer. If you're being so inclined to give, we want you to send your offering to P.O. Box 145 Gas in South Carolina, 29052. You can get by Givelify, by Cash App, We've got officers right here on location to receive from you. I want you to know that we're praying for you. We love you. And it's because of you that Zion Benevolent is the best church on this side of heaven. You be blessed until we meet again. God bless you as I pray.